Hello everyone, I heartily welcome you to my channel. In this module, we are going to discuss about chemical shift in the proton NMR spectroscopy. Friends, it is one of the very important concept in the proton NMR spectroscopy. This is outline of my talk. We will discuss about concept of the chemical shift, then why chemical shift, then some methods of the measurement of chemical shift and characteristic delta value of the proton. So let us discuss one by one. So first we will discuss about what is the exact concept of the chemical shift. Friends, as we know that in the UV spectroscopy, there is a direct measurement of the wavelength of the UV radiations which are absorbed by the molecule. Similarly, in the IR spectroscopy also, there is a direct measurement of the frequency of IR radiations which are absorbed by the molecule during the vibrations. So as I like these two spectroscopic techniques, in the NMR, there is no direct measurement of the frequency of radio waves which are required to resonate the protons. Because we know that in the NMR spectroscopy, there is a use of the radio waves as well as the magnetic field strength and at a specific magnetic field strength and specific uh, frequency of the radio waves, there is a resonance of the protons present in the molecule. But there is no direct measurement of the frequency of these radio waves uh, which required to resonate the specific type of the proton. Then what is the exact chemical shift in the proton NMR spectroscopy? So in the proton NMR spectroscopy, chemical shift is the difference in the peak position or resonance position of proton with respect to an arbitrary standard. So here we have taken one reference material which is called as a tetramethyl silane and whatever the peak position or resonance position with respect to the tetramethyl silane is called as a chemical shift. Again, there is one more thing is that the chemical shift is different for the different type of the protons. So why it is different for the different type of proton or non-equivalent protons? So it is again due to the difference in the electronic environment between the two non-equivalent protons. As well as the chemical shift is different from the TMS, it is also due to the difference in the electron density surrounding to the protons present in the TMS as well as surrounding to the protons present in the organic molecule. So this chemical shift is also called as position of the signals. Again, one more thing is that the chemical uh, shift or there is no measurement of the magnetic field that we are applying to resonate the specific protons in the NMR. So because uh, there could have possibility to measure the whatever the amount of the magnetic field that we are applying to resonate a specific type of the proton but we have not done so also again it is not the actual frequency as we told now it is not the actual frequency required to resonate the proton then what is it exactly so instead of the measurement of actual frequency uh, which are required to resonate the proton there is a reference taken and the frequencies are calibrated with respect to the reference that is tms and these frequencies are normalized with respect to the spectrometer frequency so this is about the chemical shift. So now, according, later on, you must have one question in your mind. So why chemical shift? Why there is no direct measurement of the frequency or the field strength which are required to resonate the proton? So we could give the reasons for this. So first we could give the reason for the why no frequency, why no direct measurement of the frequency required to resonate the proton and why no direct measurement of the field strength required to resonate the proton but before that we will discuss two very important terms which are required to further discussion so first that is equivalent proton so equivalent proton it is the proton which are having identical electronic environment and same chemical shift and the non-equivalent proton so these are the protons which are having a different electronic environment and it shows different chemical shift. So this is about the equivalent proton and the non-equivalent proton. So let us go to our question. So why chemical shift? Why there is no direct measurement of the frequency or the field strength required to resonate the proton? So first we'll find the answer about why there is no direct measurement of the frequency which are required to resonate the proton. So first thing is that, so many times what will get happen? Very small frequency, frequency difference to resonate the proton or to resonate the non-equivalent proton that will happen means suppose there are two non-equivalent protons and these two non-equivalent proton undergoes resonance at a different frequency but whatever the frequency difference between these two it is many times very small and this difference further get changes as we change the machine of the different field strength because as we know that there are 
different type of the machines which machine which are having a 600 megahertz capacity 300 megahertz capacity 800 megahertz capacity so like this so because of this what will get, get happen so our machines capacity is in megahertz and whatever the difference of the frequencies required to the resonance by the two non equivalent proton it is in hertz and therefore we cannot develop the scale because there will be inaccurate measurement of the frequencies which are required to resonate the proton so again uh, one more thing is that it makes the lot of confusion means data produced by one machine and uh, the same for the same proton data produced by another machine so there will be difference and therefore it makes the confusion while comparing the data produced by the two spectrophotometers so therefore there is no direct measurement of the frequency which are required to resonate the proton so now another possibility we could have measured the field strength but again we could uh, we couldn't have measured any type of the field strength which are required to resonate the proton so I, again this is so so we could give the reason for this also so first thing is that see non equivalent protons absorbs at different field strength no doubt means they undergoes resonance at a different field strength but many times this field difference it is also very small means it is it could be as small as 0.02 gauss most of the times the field which is required or magnetic field which is required to resonate the two non equivalent proton it is differ by only 0.02 gauss but an NMR producing 14,000 gauss magnetic field or more than that magnetic field field strength cannot accurately measure the field strength difference 0.02 gauss so therefore here also we cannot develop any type of the scale uh, to determine the field strength uh, of the different protons uh, to just uh, uh, find out its unique, unique character so now again there is one question why TMS is used as a standard so see chemical shift is lower I mean in case of the TMS so whatever the chemical shift of the TMS is lower than most of the protons present in the any type of the organic molecules again in the TMS there are 12 protons and all the 12 protons are equivalent and which gives only one signal and with it which is also having a very high intensity so we'll get a single peak and which are having a high intensity and this peak will get at the lower side only so again TMS is a liquid it is miscible with most of the organic solvents so we can easily use the TMS TMS is volatile so we can operate the TMS and we can recover our sample which is to be analyzed again one more thing is that TMS is inert so it doesn't react with any type of the organic molecule so we can prevent our molecule from the reaction uh, with the TMS so therefore there is use of the TMS again one more thing is that the frequency or the magnetic field of the TMS proton is considered as a zero in reality there is a need of the high field strength to resonate the protons of the TMS but that we have considered as a zero and whatever the frequency which are required to resonate all the 12 protons of TMS it is also considered as a zero and the position of the peak of the sample sample proton is measured with respect to the TMS proton so now the next point that is methods of the measurement of the chemical shift we know that there are uh, two methods which are used to measure the chemical shift of the protons first one is the delta and second one is a tau scale means there are two types of the scales so first we'll discuss about the delta scale so delta scale is widely used which is mostly accepted scale and just see how it is it was designed so delta is equal to frequency shift divided by operating frequency of the instrument in the megahertz now what is the frequency shift so frequency shift it is the frequency of radiation required to resonate the sample minus frequency of the radiation required to resonate the TMS protons in Hertz so this difference will be in Hertz divided by operating frequency of the instrument it will be in megahertz into 10 raised to 6 it will convert the value in the ppm so delta value it is expressed in the dimension unit dimensionless unit and the unit for the delta is the ppm and uh, it is independent on the field strength so generally uh, delta of the delta value of the most of the protons present in the organic molecule are in between the range 0 to 10 but sometimes we could observe more than 10 also means uh, in case of protons of the carboxylic acid we could observe the value up to the 12 ppm so means uh, this range could be in the 0 to 12 again the protons absorbs at downfield then the TMS gives the positive delta value means whatever the protons which are present in any other organic molecule that will give the 
positive delta value respective to or corresponding to the TMA. So now what is the downfield, what is upfield that we'll discuss here. So first thing is that see TMS proton. So there, there are 12 protons in the TMS and all the 12 protons are shielded and therefore to undergo the resonance by this 12 proton there is a need of the very high field strength and which is called as upfield. So whenever the high field strength that we are applying to resonate the proton it gives the lower delta value. Now in case of the sample comparative to the TMS sample protons are deshielded one and therefore it undergoes resonance at less field strength as compared to the TMS proton and therefore we can call to it downfield and whenever the protons undergoes resonance at a downfield then it gives the higher delta value. So now the second type of scale is the tau scale. So tau scale was designed to avoid the misleading of the delta scale. What is misleading in the delta scale? So misleading is that downfield which gives the lower higher delta value then upfield which gives the lower delta value. So it leads the confusion uh, in the measurement. So therefore new scale were designed and which is called as a tau and it is very simple one. So tau is equal to 10 minus delta it will give the value of the tau. So we can just uh, compare the value of the tau and the delta uh, with the help of this figure. So here we can observe if the delta value is 1. So the scale which is above this line which is the delta and scale which is below this line which is the tau scale. So if the delta value is 1 then tau value is around 9. If the delta value is 10 then tau value will show 0. So means uh, we can easily say that it is the inverse scale to the delta scale. So this is the correlation chart of the different type of the chemical shifts in delta for the different type of the organic compounds. So here we can see that carboxylic acid proton shows the chemical shift in the ppm uh, in between the 10 to 12 that is 10 to 12 delta. Then aldehyde proton it shows the delta value in between 9 to 10 chloroform the uh, proton present in the chloroform it shows the delta around 8 then aromatic protons means protons which are connected to the aromatic ring it shows the delta value in between 7 to 8 then allylic protons it shows the delta value in between 4 to 7 then phenols uh, that is OH groups uh, OH groups of the alcohol phenol it shows the delta value in between the range of 2 to 5 then NH that is uh, NH which are present in the amine it also shows the delta value in between the 4 to uh, that is 2 to 5 these are the values of the alkene which, uh, which shows the most upfield one and it shows the very low delta values around 0 to 1. So again there are so many other type of the protons that is protons present in the alkyne. It also shows the delta value in the range 2 to 3 and the protons which are connected to the carbon and this carbon if connected to the halides then it shows the delta value in between 3 to 5. If there are electron withdrawing groups present near to the proton then also it shows the delta value in between 3 to the 5. So we'll discuss these values in more detail uh, by this chart. So if you just look at this chart at first there is a zero delta value and which is uh, given to the TMS that is tetramethylsilane and if you go to the last molecule which is a carboxylic acid and it shows the delta value 10 to 13 means as we go down uh, through this table so you will find the delta value is increasing and uh, up to the last molecule this delta value it will show around 10 to 13. So why this is so? So when the delta values are higher, when the delta values are lower, this we could understand with the help of the shielding and deshielding parameter. So it is one of the very important concept. Again uh, there is one more uh, com concept that is factors affecting to the chemical shift. So friends, factors affecting to the chemical shift and the shielding and deshielding, these two concepts we will discuss in the upcoming video in the next video. So up till Thank you. Keep learning.